Hi, and welcome to Too Pretty to for Jail, part two. ICOs in the danger zone. And we're not going to sing the song because we don't want to get sued, but we're thinking it really loud. Um, by way of introduction, this is Emma Todd. She's a marketing guru from My Marketing House. And this is Amber Scott. She's a founder and chief AML ninja of Outlier Solutions. Da, 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 da. And to be very clear, um, generally speaking, we don't do a ton of work in the ICO advisory space, but we're both in the blockchain and Bitcoin space. So we deal with a lot of questions about this. Um, and we decided to do a little video just to deal with some of the major things that we see that people have questions about, try to get some good information out there and into the hands of the community. Mm -hmm. Um, hefty disclaimers. We are not lawyers, and nothing we say should be interpreted as legal advice. True. Uh, we don't represent any government or government agency. Uh, that includes law enforcement, that includes regulators and securities regulators. And nothing that we say should be interpreted as an official government statement or position. Um, this presentation is primarily going to be about Canada, so if you operate or serve customers in other jurisdictions, their laws might apply to you, and that's true whether or not you live or work there. Um, especially America. Hey. Hi, America. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Timely. Um, Switzerland probably won't save you. It won't. The first question that we get from a lot of people that are thinking about launching an ICO is where should we incorporate? Where should we be mm -hmm. so that we can offer stuff to the whole world without any possible consequences? Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, if you are advertising to the public in certain jurisdictions, if you're serving members of the public, um, if you're if you're doing anything where generally you're saying, hey, you know, Canadians, Americans, mm -hmm. come and buy this this thing, and that thing is deemed to be a security in our countries, it's going to matter. A security by any other name? Yeah. Um, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, and it flies on over our airspace. Um, <laughs> it's a duck. It's a duck. Yeah. <laughs> then trust that regulators in, in areas that have securities regulations are going to have plenty of birdshot on hand. Um, and it doesn't matter what you call it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, you could decide that you were going to call it, you're going to say it's not a token, um, it's unicorn glitter. It could, it, be, it could be pink unicorn glitter. Um, and it doesn't matter if the thing that your unicorn glitter is actually doing is representing a share of the company and providing a mechanism for you to share profits. Um, it, it is at that point essentially something that, that is being a security. It's doing all of the things that securities do, it's acting like a security. And so those functions, those actual mechanisms, those purposes of the things that you're designing are really designed to be securities. Um, focus less on whether you're calling it, a, you know, an ICO or an ITO or whatever, and more on what the thing is actually doing. Exactly. Protect yourself, part one, get informed. So these are links, I'll, I'll leave them up for, for a minute. We'll post them in the, the um, notes on YouTube as well. Um, but look at real information. So the first one is the guidance notes. Um, and those guidance notes were issued by a, a consortia of the securities regulators in Canada. Um, there's some wonderful analysis by Addison Cameron Huff. Um, and there's a really great um, blog that was posted by uh, Vinny Lingham, which was a brief intro to token sales. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I thought was fantastic about this was that he talks about it and he comes out and says, it takes time, it takes time to get it right. So if you're calling someone and saying, I heard about ICOs yesterday, I wanna launch one in a month, you can't really expect phenomenal success, success around that, you can't expect to have the time to get it right in most cases. And protect yourself, part two, lawyer up. Um, so the, these are some folks that we know that are lawyers that know a thing or two or lots um, about the ICO space. There, there are many more. Um, Addison is definitely on this list, but unfortunately Anthony has, uh, has stolen him, so he's full-time Jackson Decentral. Congratulations! Congratulations, but we um, miss you. <laughs> we do miss you. Um, but, uh, but other fabulous lawyers on this list as well. Um, I'm sure that, uh, that there are many more and that there will be many more in the coming years. Mm -hmm. But if you're worried that you might be a security, that you might be doing something that falls under the auspices of securities, it's worth it to go and ask a professional. Um, and find out about that. And again, we are not those professionals. We're not. These people that you're seeing on your screen um, are those professionals that you yeah. want to talk to. Protect yourself, part, part three, real advisors. Yeah. Um, 
one of the weird questions that we got when we were talking to someone a couple weeks ago is, you know, how, how do I approach people? How do I talk about my, my project? Mm -hmm. Um, look for people that you really want to be coached by. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you like what they have to say, you know, sometimes good advisors are going to tell you things that you don't want to hear, but you should be coachable by those people. They, they should be people, you know, that you want to learn from. Yeah. Um, when you're excited about your idea and you can get people excited about your idea with you, they're going to want to understand the work that you're doing. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're going to want to do that, but, uh, they may not necessarily want their picture on your website. So there are a number of really prominent people in the community, like um, among them, um, Andreas Antonopoulos and Vitalik Buterin, who've come out and said, Hey, you know, we're not going to publicly act as advisors. Um, Some of the things that have led to this are these guys who are absolutely brilliant have had people just slapping their picture up on a website and not really taking any, um, any advice, any coaching, any direction, Mm -hmm. and just really using that as a marketing ploy. Yeah. Um, and you're a marketing guru, Emma. What do you think of that? Well, it's actually illegal because you're using someone's, um, image without like their, their knowledge or their approval. So you really shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, it's, um, actually, well, quite frankly, you're, you're telling people that this person has given advice and they haven't. So it's really kind of not, well, so not, definitely not the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what about the case where you've, you've said that you would give me advice, but then I don't really want advice. I just want to put your picture up and call it a day. Then you're not really an advisor. You're just using someone's um, image in order to sell um, your token, and you really shouldn't be doing that. Can that, but do you think that can hurt someone's brand in the long term? Or? Definitely, because if something ends up happening and it's not what someone would have, would have advised, then really it's... You're really damaging that person's brand. All right. Yeah. There you go. From the marketing guru herself. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Short and sweet. Um, good luck out there. If good you luck. have if you have any questions, if there's uh, if you need help getting in touch with someone um, who is a good lawyer or who does ICO promotion, um, reach out and uh, yeah. Take care. Take care.